predation and the functional response. Biologists are very interested in how quickly uh, predators eat prey. And when they talk about the rate that a, a predator eats uh, prey as a function of the prey density, they call this a functional response. And they're very interested in modeling this. And this is where functions come to play. And so the simplest model for a functional response is uh, u is equal to f1 of n, which is equal to a times n. Now u is the rate of prey consumption. n is the prey density. And a greater than zero is what we call a parameter. It's a fixed number. It could be one, it could be 3.75. When we think of uh, the, the prey, think of maybe uh, moose. The predator could be uh, wolves. And uh, we're interested in how quickly wolves would consume moose as a function of the density of moose. So if we were going to plot this function, f1, it would look like this. We'd put n, the prey density, on the horizontal axis, and f1 of n on the vertical axis, and it would be a straight line. And I've chosen two different parameters, a1 and a2, where a1 is less than a2, just to show that the slope of the line gets larger when a gets larger. This is a simple model. It's not entirely realistic, though, because uh, when the prey density gets very large, the function f1 continues to grow until it becomes infinite. And so we could write the limit as n goes to infinity, f1 of n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, a times n, and that'll be infinity because n's going to infinity and a is a positive constant. So what's missing? Well, the thing that's missing is uh, what's called uh, handling time. So handling time is the length of time it takes for a, a predator to uh, handle and consume uh, and digest a prey. And we're going to call this T sub h. The functional response with the handling time included is u is f2 of n is equal to a times n, this part looks familiar, over 1 plus a times t sub h times n. So the difference now is the handling time. The handling time, we say, is greater than or equal to 0. If the handling time is equal to 0, then we have the previous case. And biologists have called this a type 1 functional response, and this one a type 2. Okay, so we'd like to get a sense of what the type 2 functional response looks like. And the first thing we can do is take the limit as n goes to infinity of this f2. So the limit as n goes to infinity, f2 of n, is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, a n over 1 plus a times t sub h times n. And what we can do here is uh, divide the top and bottom by the highest power of n, 
which is n to the first power. And we can see that uh, 1 over n is going to go to 0, and then n over n and the n over n are just going to uh, cancel. So this is equal to a over a t sub h, which is 1 over t sub h. Okay, so as the prey density gets large, the rate of prey consumption is just going to be 1 over the handling time. It won't go forever. We can also look at the uh, intercepts. And so if, uh, if n is equal to 0, f2 of 0 is equal to 0. And uh, if uh, f2 of n is equal to 0, then we have a n over 1 plus a t sub h n is equal to 0. And this gives us that n equals 0. Okay, so the intercept is 0, 0. Okay, so we'd like to be able to uh, plot this graph, and that's the next thing that we're going to do. The graph of the type 2 functional response has n on the horizontal axis, and it has f2 of n on the vertical axis, and uh, we can put in the horizontal line 1 over t sub h, and we know that the function goes through 0, 0, and it looks something like this. So when we learn more about graphing functions, and we've worked on the derivative and the second derivative and curve sketching, we'll learn how to plot this function. But for now, let's just take the function as given here, and so uh, as n goes to infinity, we see that we have a horizontal asymptote at 1 over t sub h. Okay. So uh, the parameters a and t sub h are numbers. And uh, for any given system, we can measure those numbers. And so for uh, wolves in Scandinavia and moose, these uh, numbers were measured by uh, an author by, called Zimmerman. And they're... Uh, co-workers in 2014. And they calculated that A is 0 0.05 and the units are days times kilometers squared and the handling time is six days. Okay, so we can put this in the function and now we see that F2 of n is 0 0.05 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 times 6 n, and there should be an n on the top as well as the bottom. Okay, so uh, with this uh, function, we can ask the following question. Suppose that uh, that a wolf pack needs to feed on a moose about every 12 days. Then what would the density of moose uh, be needed so as to uh, feed a wolf pack? Okay, so... Um,
So we use the inverse function approach to answer this question. And so we know that uh, 1 over 12 is going to be equal to our f2 of n, which is equal to 0.05n over 1 plus, and I'm going to put the 0 0.5 and the 6 together and write it as 0 0.3 n. And so we can cross multiply and we get 1 plus 0 0.3 n is equal to 12 times 0 0.5 which is 0 0.6 n. If we subtract 0 0.3 n from both sides we get 1 is equal to 0 0.3 n and we can divide through by 0 0.3 to get n is 1 over 0 0.3, which is 3.33. And this would be 3.33 moose per kilometer squared. And so it turns out that the density of moose in the area where this study was taken is around 5 moose per kilometer squared. And so there are enough moose to sustain the wolf packs there. But if the moose level were to drop below uh, about three moose per kilometer squared, then the wolf packs would find it difficult to uh, get enough food.